Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS. If you're new, welcome and welcome back KS family. Let's run the numbers. Bitcoin currently down 0.52% to 39,681. Ethereum down 0.9% to 2938. From my 30 plus years in financial markets, I explain the smart money mindset to assist you to be more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love, gaining real wealth in the process. If you would like daily updates on price movements in the crypto market, seven days a week, 365 days a year, please subscribe to YouTube. Thank you for being a part of our globally extended family. I very much appreciate you being here. What I do at the start of each video is to just basically to take you through the market to show you what's going on and you can refer back to these videos at a later time. As a crypto technical analyst, tracking the market's momentum is really good to see. It's good to have a look through and actually see what is moving every day. So that's why I do that introduction. I've left helpful links in the description of this video. As crypto technical analysts, we scientifically track investor attention. Investor attention is measured through price. Price is reality. We don't care about future promises. The future may look really, really great inside many, well, pretty much all of these cryptos. And we say, tell me what the chart is doing. How is the market moving? Where is the investor attention inside the crypto market? I have to make sure that I'm not self-sabotaging and self-doubting myself because psychology determines profitability. And then I just apply Borsog methods and a specific set of trading and investing rules to buy and sell. As a community, we focus on a smart money mindset. We know that as traders, we buy on red, we sell on green, buy on red, bore, sell on green, SOG. Borsog. That's what we do. We Borsog. And the investor component of us holds on for dear life. And it's like that in crypto. Crypto can get really, really turbulent, but we combine the best of both a investor and a trader. And we also know that underneath the bull market and the bear market, underneath all markets is the Borsog market. Just as our beloved community doesn't look at any distinction between investing and trading, we also ignore retail market sentiment about bull markets and bear markets. We know that there's really only one market, which is the Borsog market. Prices can go up, prices can go down, but with crypto prices going up and down all the time, and we just seek to take advantage of that. But we have the knowledge as to when that is. And we have the patience to wait and the patience to sell as well. What we're always seeking to do is to implement rule 359. Be on the right side of the percentage. A lot of people say be on the right side of the trade. That's not really what you need to be doing. You need to be on the right side of the percentage. For example, when we talk about the 10-5-10 fund, if you bought a crypto for $10 and it sunk down to $5, which is every other week, you just lost 50%. But when that crypto comes back to $10, it goes up 100%. Being on the right side of the percentage means that we bore SOG in as prices are coming down. We're not like retail. We have a completely different mindset. We have an institutional smart money mindset. I'll give you a little example here. A beloved community member reached out and shared their trade with me. Thanks so much. What we're looking at here is GMT. GMT, the buy at 3.13470. 3.13470. I'm going to play this forward, but I just want to show you what happened before this particular community member placed these particular trades. Now we buy on red, so that is red, and we sell on green, that is green. So what is that price? That's 344318, 3444318. <laughs> and we can see that this particular community member put $743 on the red and cashed out at 815. 743, all of these decimal places in there, 815, all of those decimal places in there. 
this community ma member made a 9.7% return in just a couple of days. Well done, my friend. When you take an aggregated annualized return on investment, it turns out to be over a million percent. This is not what we're about, but it's just the understanding that when you're on the right side of the percentage and you can accumulate your trades, like we saw with Crypto Turtle in yesterday's episode, this works out to be really, really well. Now, a lot of people say, I want a really good return on investment, so I'll just hodl. The problem with hodling is the actual mindset. Many people, when it comes to investing, they say, I must hold, I must have diamond hands. Everybody on Twitter says, I've got to have a diamond hand. I can't have paper hands. I have to hold no matter what. Well, the, the truth is you can actually turn things over. It's not a bad thing to do. It's all about knowing that investors sell and investors buy and traders buy and traders sell. There's no difference between the two. I know the tax authorities see a difference in terms of taxation, but hey, if you're making money, you're making money. Would you prefer to make more money or less money? Most people would prefer to make more, but you have to have the knowledge and you have to have the skills. And it's not just about that. You have to have the mindset as well. So getting back to this example, let me just play this for you because I think it's so fascinating to see this in operation. We can see what the red was. Okay, this community member bought now and they've put their order up here to sell. Bang, they caught that tail. Good one. Fantastic. You can see how things work. This was a very, very good trade and the particular person said, well, I, I did quite well. Now, you could always go back in when it hits, and this is what happens many, many times in the community. I showed you a particular trade on Ape yesterday, but I've shown you a lot of trades on Ape before with people coming in and buying and riding the wave up and selling, buying the pullback and selling. This is what you can actually do. Now, a lot of people ask me the question and they say, Ken, I'm pretty much a hardcore investor. The first thing I would say is don't narrowly define yourself. Don't narrowly define yourself in anything. You're an unlimited human being. You are just putting money into something. You have a particular preference at the moment, and that's fine. I would suggest taking a small percentage of your portfolio and seeking to borsog your way in. And you need knowledge to do that. So be careful when you're actually doing it. You need to know. It's not just throwing a dart at a dartboard. There is a science behind this. And don't please don't put yourself under any pressure saying that I must turn 10% per two days. Don't worry about that. The market does what the market does. We cannot control the market. But when you look at the concept, when you look at the idea, if you could turn 10% a week, over 52 weeks and just reinvest your gains, you would turn 1,000 into 117,000. Now, what does this mean? Does this mean we're after this 10%? No, we're not after that 10%. Sometimes you can do much, much better. Sometimes you don't do that. It's up to the market. We cannot force the market to fit our version of reality. This is a concept just like the 10-5-10 fund. To get 117.4x return, that's pretty good, but you're only looking at 10%. This is what a lot of investors are not taught to see, but institutions know this like the back of their hand. To be able to do this, you need the knowledge. There are a lot of rules that you need to follow. <laughs> Quite surprisingly, you do require patience. If you go in and just buy at market, which means you're always overpaying, what you will find is the percentages already moved against you. You have to have a real wealth and positive excellence life trend outlook on what you're doing, or else you simply won't put in the work. You will look to others to do the work for you. Nobody becomes successful looking to others to do the work for them. We all have to step up in our lives and do the hard work. That's why I always talk about maintaining a positive excellence life trend. 
when you have outer peace, that means that you don't have conflict with others. That's not a boring life. That's actually quite a nice life. Inner peace is not having conflict with yourself. When you have this level of peace, you can clear your mind to focus on what is really important. And what's really important is bringing your unique contribution to this world. The world wants your talents, whatever they are. Having gratitude is so important. Without gratitude, we do not have peace. We have conflict. Without happiness, well, we don't look at the world as being a good place to live in. Decency and integrity are incredibly important. Doing the right thing when no one is looking is incredibly important. You don't trust people who do not have integrity or decency. And you need to be trusted, but it needs to be genuine. Also, kindness is incredibly important. People go through really, really hard roads in life. If you scratch the surface behind people's lives, you'd be horrified to see what is actually happening in their lives. I always say that everybody walks a really tough road. And if there's more kindness in the world, we're paving a nicer view for them. But it's not just them, it's ourselves as well. Forgiveness is incredibly important and that forgiveness should be always aimed inwardly at the start. If you can forgive yourself for whatever happened in your past, that's a beautiful thing to do because it releases your present and your future. But nothing is accomplished without persistence and commitment. Having a positive excellence life trend means we put in the hard work. We do things one step at a time and we succeed because it's inevitable. If you actually apply positive excellence, you will win. Absolutely. In your work, in your friendships, no matter what you're trading, you're investing, whatever it is, your sports. Whatever it is, you will succeed because you'll put in that bit of magic sauce, that extra effort that separates everyone from the champions. A positive excellence life trend focus understands that when you do all these green boxes, money, security, love, all of those things naturally follow. You don't push any of them. If you don't focus on the money, it will come. Focus on being able and capable to withstand the financial abundance that will naturally follow. And it will naturally follow. I love this particular quote because it's so true. Life resets daily. It doesn't matter what happened yesterday. It doesn't matter who you were yesterday. You can change. You can be a better you today. If you just improve just a little bit each day, you will lead a happier and more meaningful life. If you can get away from conflict, avoid conflict. That doesn't mean you shy away. That doesn't mean you're weak. Not at all. When you deliberately say, I don't want to get into conflict with others, you've actually taken the step, the first critical step to real wealth and such meaning will follow. Okay, let's have a look at Bitcoin. Now you might say, Ken, why didn't you just look at Bitcoin? Why do you talk about all this real wealth mumbo jumbo stuff? Because without real wealth and a positive excellence life trend, you will get shaken out of your position. You'll get scared and scared money is lost money. So we must always understand how the markets work, but more so how we work internally as well. We can see Bitcoin is currently trading at 39,488. It's very much close to this support level. This support level has been holding up incredibly well. We have a lower support at 39,084. Many of the community said that they would expect we dip down to B, come back to A. We've pretty much done that. Well done, everyone. And what happens when the main markets open? I would not be surprised at all if we get a dip into B to shake out a lot of leverage longs and attract the shorts and get a wick up. This tends to happen with Bitcoin. But remember, markets do not have certainty and especially the crypto market. You must make in advance probabilistic choices. What will you do if things just reverse and go up? Say you're going long and we don't recommend that anybody leverage trades until they absolutely utterly are professional. Even then, there's no requirement to do it in crypto. What happens if the position goes against you and it just plummets 
what will you do if you have an understanding of your actions that will actually reduce stress and you can always buy lower we've seen a great degree of correlation between the u.s indices and bitcoin's price recently we saw the nasdaq 100 sell off dramatically but a lot of people have been saying and i believe this as well that the actual fed rate hikes have been actually baked in a lot of people expected this i think it was just a way that institutions push down the price because they want to borsog institutions borsog they're not like investors they don't hold for the long term of course some do if we talk about warren buffett he's he's a notoriously long-term holder but i'm talking about institutions trading desks they're in and out of positions all the time they know what they're doing they make the percentage work for them as we had a sell-off in the nasdaq of course the shorts are getting more and more confidence they're coming into the market but also the longs are coming into the market this actually tells us that there's some fight happening here at the moment both the longs and the shorts think that they're on the right side of the trade so to speak now what does this actually mean well someone's got it wrong and the truth is it could be either the longs have got it wrong or the shorts have got it wrong let's look at the actual reality what's happened the shorts have come in saying price is going to go down i'm sure of it and the longs have come in and say price can't go down any further i'm sure of it both parties are sure of it okay what's price doing price is going yeah i'm kind of not decided who's going to win this particular round of the event one thing to bear in mind across the weekend we have very light trading volume and the weekend is just about to close we can see that there's been 91.82 million in liquidations across 33,685 positions for the past 24 hours 76 percent of those liquidations were long what about the past 12 about 76 about the same what about the past four it's going down about 68 what about the past hour it's going up welcome to the market the market is bananas when it comes to longs and shorts that's why leverage trading is really really dangerous unless you absolutely know what you're doing longs and shorts are always getting liquidated even across the weekends we were expecting a little bit lower volume than this so this is actually quite interesting usually on weekends you get around this kind of volume what we've seen is a much higher type of volume in this particular round i think a lot of people are getting scared by what's happening in the main markets there's a ton of negative sentiment out inside the markets and i would like to do a call out to crypto badger who put this data pool dot app it's a great site thank you so much crypto badger crypto badger is a ctks ambassador and a fantastic person all the ambassadors are really really awesome and our community is awesome as well what we see when we're looking at twitter sentiment analysis there's a lot of negativity on bitcoin at the moment and we know bitcoin rules the crypto market this shows me that people are very bearish they believe the prices will come down and we've seen just before that how easy it is to borsog in really really quickly and do well you can make money in every single market but you have to have the right way to look at the market the right way is the borsog way that allows you to become an institution of one and a smart money trader and investor and we know all investors become traders anytime they buy or sell so doing it really really effectively is very important this is quite good for google trends as well we can see from the google trends things have got a little bit bearish they spiked up a bit a little bit positive and now they've gone down to negative okay let's see what happens one thing that i teach inside the master class is the ability to actually determine continuously reliable signals and that's probably come from my background as a former statistics lecturer when you look at this particular chart bitcoin buy sell differences on binance 
I always say you don't have to know the mechanics of a car to actually drive it. You just need to know the road rules. It's kind of like this. Notice these big spikes down. What were they accompanied by? Massive off cells. What about these big spikes up? What were they accompanied by or preceding? Big spikes up in price. This is a very, very interesting thing. What are we looking at currently? A big spike down, but not much of a change in price. If we compare this point to this point, we can say there's a lot of consolidation through here. Does that mean it won't come down further? Absolutely not. There is no certainty inside financial markets, especially the crypto market. And this is something that you always need to keep reminding yourself of. You can always buy lower. Professionals set traps for purchase orders way below the current price, as well as, as participating in the current price also. The Masterclass is a huge deep dive on the intricacies of the trading and investing mindset when it comes to crypto, of course, focused on trading. And that's the critical part that is generally a weak spot for investors. If you know how to trade, you're going to do really, really well as an investor. What's happening with fear inside the crypto market? What we actually notice here, fear is spiking up and it's been really elevated for quite some period of time. Now, what is price doing? Price is saying, yeah, I'm about all feared out right now. I've become numb to fear, says the market. Fear go away. <laughs> and we can see a lot of consolidation through here. We've also got consolidation or support, I should say, through these back areas, just recent price support. This is not actually a bad thing. Does it mean price is just going to shoot up and it's going to go to the moon right next minute? No, absolutely not. Crypto is a beast and we always have to do our three-way decision making. We have to know what we will do. A lot of people say, Ken, but tell us what to do in terms of those three ways. I can only say that experts do not know your needs. A lot of people actually trade and invest with money that they need to pay bills with. That by definition is scared money. You're always going to be freaking out if price goes down because you say, I can't pay my bills. When it comes to money that you can afford to put into the market and just say, if this thing goes against me for the next 12 months, I'm cool with it. I don't care. If you do that, that is a good way to actually start your trading and investing journey. If you absolutely need the money, please be really, really careful. You have to apply different thinking to that. And you don't really want scared money. You want something that you can just first initially learn with. This is why a lot of people get into leverage trading, because what actually happens with leverage, you can get many, many times more bang for your buck, so to speak, with leverage, because it can turn $100 into $1,000, for example, but it also goes the other way. If you actually lose money, you end up losing it all. Don't touch leverage until you absolutely, utterly know what you're doing. It will destroy your account. When we look at aggregated open interest, we can see it's starting to bottom out, starting to turn around, and there's also support in here. I believe the financial markets are much healthier than actual people have been talking about. And why is that? Because of the technical composition of the markets. Yes, there is a bit of negative price momentum in the markets at the moment. And that is always to be expected. Why? Because price moves in a wave. That's rule four. Price moves in waves. A powerful thing is to remember this rule. Rule four. Price moves in waves. Price is always coming up and going down, coming up and going down. It's a natural function of the crypto market, and those waves are like tsunamis. So getting used to the volatility is really important. Binance, the largest crypto exchange on the planet, its futures open interest is in an uptrend, and it's being really, real, very, very well supported. We would expect and it's just starting to cross over, potentially starting to cross over. 
we would expect prices to go higher. That doesn't mean there's not going to be turbulence. There could be negative price momentum. Just be careful of these things. If you're searching for certainty, understand that you're going in the wrong direction. You must play from a probability perspective. You need to be like a crypto detective. Ooh, how cool, like CSI. Let's have a look at the top performing cryptos. Up in front is Ape, up about 46%. And this is in the last seven days. Carva, up nearly 24. CRV, nearly 22. SNX, nearly 17, as is Luna. Cake, just around 11. TRX, 9. ICX, coming up, 9%. LRC, 5%. Theta and Sand, just following behind that. You can see that there's always opportunities in the crypto market. And what we often see is some degree of breakout from the pack. But everything is following Bitcoin's gravity even if it doesn't seem like it. Just if we cast our mind back to this beloved community member's share, you can see that from selling from here to there, and for example, if we were fortunate enough to come down a little bit more and sell up to just the same percentage, you can see that this is very, very possible to do. It's possible to just work within the swings, and this is over a four hour period. So just keep this in mind. It's always possible to make money. And you could literally stick with the top cryptos if you wish. The further out you go, the more volatility there is. And therefore, the more risk there is. You have to figure out if you want more risk or you want more certainty. Let's have a look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin is below its support level. We've been looking at these spikes downwards and we could get another spike down. And if we do, that's completely fine. The reason I'm not concerned about these big sharp spikes down is that it puts us on the right side of the percentage. You will often notice how sharp spikes angle down and then reflect back. I love sharp spikes because they're so good for boresogging. Boresogging, yeah, I think it should be a, an Olympic event, definitely. Okay, let's have a look at Ethereum. One thing to always bear in mind is your pattern recognition. When you look at Bitcoin's gravity, that is the blue line. That's Bitcoin's price action. When Bitcoin's price action come de comes down, it drags the entire crypto market down with it. When it bounces, it pulls it up. We get about 1% of cryptos that go in the opposite direction, but gravity gets them eventually. That's why we must be aware of the gravitational pull of Bitcoin on your beloved alts. I always say, if people are saying, Ken, what happened to my alt? My alt is not going too well. I'll say, Bitcoin did it. Of course, we can get news stories coming out, which can cause temporary spikes and temporary plummets as well. But overall, it's pretty much Bitcoin. Let's have a look at Binance Coin. Binance Coin is coming up to a lot of support. It has a tremendous amount of support below it. Let's have a look at XRP. XRP is coming back to its support line. It's just so fascinating. If you think back here, when XRP was wobbling like this, and it was doing so, so very, very well, we would think that this support line couldn't be touched. But as crypto technical analysts, we know it can be touched we're actually getting on the right side of the percentage. Many people get the certainty that things are improving and they buy on the way up, which is really, really normal to do. Unfortunately, because crypto is so crazy volatile, we need to make volatility our best friend. That's why we buy it on the way down. But you have to pick strong projects. And there's a whole lot of risk management that you do upfront in order to do that. We discuss that inside the masterclass. When we look at ADA Cardano, ADA did a very nice spike up, but it's now backwards. We were looking back here and saying ADA is looking pretty good. And there was a lot of bearish commentary in the market when I said that. A lot of people said, oh, you know, ADA's done. It's dusted. And I was saying, no, it's not. I think it's very much due for a bounce. And it bounced really, really well. And a lot of people did well on that trade. Fantastic. The concept is ADA's coming down at the moment. I think ADA is incredibly oversold. 
but you notice that ADA has a little bit of weakness compared to Solana. Solana has more support through here. That when we look at ADA, it has more resistance at that sort of 946 level, whereas the support is much lower. So if Solana can break through that and start to rally, it will get up to around the first resistance at around 117.73 and the second resistance around 137.50. So there could be some very, very good gains. Don't forget that institutions want to scare Main Street. That's how they actually make their money. One thing that we look at when we look at Luna, look at that power, look at that strength. Luna is doing really well, but always bear in mind, Luna can come down very hard, very sharp, very fast, and it can also reverse it. It is particularly volatile. That's why you don't need any leverage. It's already built into some of these cryptos. Well, all of them. Let's have a look at AVAX. We had this support line and what happened? It was rallying really, really well and it came down and now it's touched support. We would expect a lot of buyers to come in. AVAX is a particularly powerful project. Does it mean that AVAX can't go down further? AVAX cannot escape Bitcoin's gravity. If Bitcoin does a long tail rejection down here or does a sell off down here, the entire crypto market will follow. I know a lot of people want certainty. They want to say, I know absolutely 100% what is going to happen. That is a myth and a fantasy. You will never ever know that. I know a lot of people try to sell indicators and do all sorts of things to try and prove to you that there is certainty. There is no certainty inside financial markets, especially crypto. If you embrace that, you move out of zone one and zone two, which are high stress zones, into zone three and zone four, which are based on probability and reality. Let's have a peep at the community favorites. When we look at Gala, it's coming down, but it's following Bitcoin's gravity. And this is the way that you need to look at the market. If you understand the role of Bitcoin's gravity, you will absolutely be more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love. And that's what our community is all about. RSR has got substantial support below it in terms of a relative comparison with Gala. Gala, not so much. That relative support was up there. It's under resistance at the moment. But beware, when cryptos get going, they do this kind of potential price action and they do this type of potential price action as well. That's why a lot of people feel that they say, oh no, I've missed out. It's all over. I'm going to pack up and go home. It's not the way to think about the crypto market. Just think of bore sogging. And if you're actually just trying to turn that 10% or whatever percent that you feel happy with, that's not a bad way to go. Let's have a look at Icon. Icon has been showing up as having some degree of strength. It's overcome a resistance. It's getting very close to overcoming secondary resistance here. If it does so, what we would look at is around the 86.8 mark and then the 981 mark and then the 1098 mark. This could be very, very interesting. It's looking really good for Icon at the moment. Veracity. Veracity had a lot of support below it, but it's actually showing relative weakness to Bitcoin's price action. This doesn't mean that Veracity is a bad project or anything like that. Projects can be moved around for a myriad of reasons. You must always prepare yourself for buying lower. This actually always reinforces the concept that you don't need to FOMO into anything. You don't have a fear of missing out. And many people experience this. They buy at a certain level and it just keeps on going down. The key is to buy in levels. When we look at Zill, Silica, we can see that Zillica is coming up to a very important support level. If this breaks, there's not a lot of support until we reach about 61.19. If you can hold between there, the current price, and around that level, okay, that's good. You have the stomach to withstand Zillica. Does it mean it's going to come down? Not at all. The concept is you need to be able to mentally prepare. That's why we talk a lot about real wealth. 
I spend a lot of time talking about psychology because Rule 570 is absolutely critical to your success. Psychology sets profitability. That's why the focus on real wealth comes before the trigger section. People just want to buy and sell. They just want to say, give me certainty. I need a level. Unfortunately, that doesn't help you. You need to develop your skills yourself and you do that only through knowledge. We talk about the knowledge that you require inside the masterclass. When people first get into the crypto market, they're like a light switch. They tend to light switch in and out. They go all in and go all out and they fire before they've aimed. What you'll find, professionals do things very, very differently. They're not like a light switch. They're like a dimmer. They come on slowly. They actually layer their buy orders into the market and wait for price to come to them. When a buy order is filled, they immediately set a sell level at a percentage they're happy with, understanding the fact that small percentages added up make big percentages overall. It's said that about 95% of people lose money, and I'm not surprised because the thinking is already against people. We're taught just as zone one and zone two are the entry places for all financial markets. We're taught the wrong things. We're, we're taught buy low, sell. Please complete that sentence in the, in the comment section because it's really, really important to know how ingrained this institutional malarkey is. The institutions actually teach you how to think and it's not for your benefit, it's for their benefit. So the question is, complete this sentence, buy low, sell in the comment section. And let's have a talk about that because that is one of the most damaging rules in investing and trading that has ever passed anybody's lips. Whoever said that first, we need to track that person down. And of course, have a chat with them. Professionals are not emotional and mastery of emotional control is utterly important. If you don't have this, you're in trouble. Because why is it important is the real question. If you don't have emotional control, you will get in and place emotional trades and investments. And they are always based on fear, fear of missing out or fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Anything created in fear literally creates the fear you're afraid of. You're almost guaranteed to lose. You have to be chill. You have to step back. You have to be cool. Okay, let's get back into it. Rune, we can see. Rune has come up, but in a more gradual way than Zilliqa. Zilliqa shot straight up. Rune has done a much more favored action, price action. Again, Beware of the negative downside risk. The next literal real support is around 6204. We always have to be ready to buy lower. IOTA. IOTA is consolidating and it's been consolidating for some time as well. We could get a natural price wave up, but remember, make the percentages work for you. If you're a long-term investor, you want to buy these tails. That's where you want to be in because that will lower your average buy price. That's not an easy thing to do. You need a lot of knowledge to do it. And when we look at DOT, DOT has a lot of support below it at the moment. Go DOT. Let's have a look at our next date. This is all about giving you pattern recognition skills. What you'll find is that when you mark up charts, when you look at how Bitcoin's gravity impacts different alts, you can see that different alts have different personalities. For example, sand has a different personality than ape. It's got a different personality than near. A lot of people want to apply the same kind of thinking to sand, ape, and near, and let's say SLP, that they do for anything. Kind of a vanilla way of looking at the market. Vanilla is not good. It's tailored. You have to look at the dynamics of the actual crypto itself and obey that psychology. You'll learn how to mark up charts with the CTKS method, which has been designed specifically for crypto inside the masterclass. 
And the foundation section where you learn that methodology is pretty onerous. I say it's like a spiral staircase of knowledge. I just use just-in-time knowledge to build each step for you at a time as you walk up the staircase. You can think about it like this. Each step inside the foundation is a particular knowledge piece that you must learn in order to go to the next step. I never do revision inside the masterclass foundation section, even though it looks at like it. What I'm actually doing is making sure that you have new knowledge steps to take you all the way up to where you need to go. I've seen people skipping knowledge steps and then asking questions. How do I do this? How do I do that? I know who has done the work and who hasn't done the work. It's really important to do the work. The crypto market is really, really demanding and you're putting your hard earned effort and money into the market. Just put the same level of commitment into your learning as well. And it doesn't matter if you don't do the masterclass. The concept is that this is life. Everything that you can learn can take you to a higher level, but only if you give it the time to go through it. That knowledge staircase will allow you to understand SAND, NEAR, APE, SLP from a very, very different perspective than anything else. You can actually dispense with pattern analysis. The stock market is all about, is this a cup and handle? Is it this pattern? Is it that pattern? What doji is forming? Crypto is not like that. Crypto is exponential by nature. We can't use stock market trading and Forex trading or Forex technical analysis and stock market technical analysis in the crypto market. I think it comes from my background as an inventor and also former lecturer in first and second year statistics. Statistics is all about probability and all about exponential action. To understand exponential action, which is what we're look, looking at with APE, if I gave you a little problem to solve, a pond has algae. In 30 days, the pond will be completely covered with algae. On what day out of the 30 is it 50% covered by algae? Please let me know in the comments section. It's a really fun one. The logic is when people understand the nature of exponential price action, they understand why we need a new way to look at the crypto market. Okay, getting back to it. Sand is bottoming out at the moment. We can see Axie a little bit below a level of previous support. It really, we know that it all comes down to what happens with Bitcoin. If Bitcoin puts in a flurry, all of these things are going to shoot up. That is the nature because no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity. That's why it's really important to know what Bitcoin is doing. And we've seen so much negative sentiment on Bitcoin. This is the time where professionals lean in. What's happening to Decentraland, MANA? We've seen MANA was really holding up well comparatively to SAN, and it's come down recently, but it's striking a level of support over here. And it could be looking quite interesting. There's a number of techniques from the masterclass you can apply to look at MANA. When we see NEAR, what's NEAR doing? NEAR is seeking to get over the resistance at 17555. It has to pass through this level of resistance to get higher to the next one around 19825. That said, it's very positive at the moment, but we're showing signs of weakness because of Bitcoin as well. Remember, no alt can escape. Let's have a look at Engine. Engine is coming up to a level of support. And look at Ape. Ape has just gone Ape. It's doing so very, very well. And community members have been reaching out with their trades on Ape. I'd just like to thank everyone. And if you include a screenshot, and it's just a screenshot you need, of your particular trade history, which shows the amounts, just like this, what you buy at, how much, what you sell out, how much, and the timing. It's really important to be 100% transparent and make sure that people know exactly what's going on and can drill into it. That's the logic. And thank you everybody for sharing. It's so beautiful.
Chile still has a massive amount of support below it, and it's one of the rare ones that it's pretty much moving in terms of Bitcoin's gravity. If Bitcoin sells off sharply when the markets open, it will still have a great degree of consolidation support below it, so it should bounce back. And we have to bear in mind that the crypto market does what the crypto market does. We just have to have our three-way logic. Now, don't forget, that certainty is punished in financial markets. If everybody is absolutely 100% certain that something is going to happen, in all probability, the opposite thing will happen. SLP has a history of rallying, collapsing, rallying, collapsing. If we get another rally up here, it could be really interesting. But don't forget, this is a little bit high risk. You just have to manage your risk and you need to be comfortable and confident that you can withstand things. I like saying to people, it's good to go for the least risk scenario, especially when you're learning and you can scale your particular sizes. You don't need to trade with $1,000 a level. You can trade with $200 a level, $50 per level. It doesn't matter what you trade with. The key is gaining the skill. Being and living in Australia, Anzac Day is a really special day to us. It's a national day of remembrance in Australia and New Zealand that commemorates all Australians and New Zealanders who served and died in all wars, conflicts and peacekeeping operations. We remember the fallen and commemorate them with a poppy. If you've listened to this point, you're showing an enormous amount of positive excellence. Perhaps just do a little secret keyword so I know who you are. Maybe just put poppy somewhere inside a particular sentence that you write. It'll be our little secret code. And this is an image of what a poppy actually looks like. It's not that poppy. It's this poppy, the flower. Have a great time ahead, everyone, and lots of love.